We know you like cheap keyboards because we've made this video before and you liked it. But look at that wrinkleless face and discontinued merch. That was over three years ago. So today we're gonna look at eight of the top keyboards from amazon.com for under 20 bucks. You know what hasn't changed in the last three years? My segues. Glasswire lets you instantly see your current and past network activity, detect malware, and block badly behaving apps on your PC or Android device. Use offer code Linus to get 25% off Glasswire at the link in the video description. First up, the unfortunately named RK100 Plus for around 17 US dollars. It's a 10 key keyboard, that is to say that it does in fact have a numpad with slim bezels, rounded corners, and a box that's impossible to get the sleeve off of. There we go. And it's got RGB lighting, or that is to say it looks like it has RGB lighting. It's actually just multiple single color LEDs giving you an RGB aesthetic. You can adjust the lights through four brightness levels and as for effects, they're static or breathing, but there's not actually that many LEDs under the keys, so the illumination isn't very even. The typing experience also isn't great. The board's low 600 gram weight and mushy membrane switches are bad enough, although they do have a tactile bump for that mechanical feel. Then the egregious levels of deck flex take it to another level of suck. This keyboard actually manages to compress in the middle as you type. The problem is that it's all plastic without a metal face or a metal backplate to give it a nice rigid base for you to type against. The keys themselves are clear painted plastic, which lets them use negative space to let the LED light shine through the legend. But the problem is that these types of keys can have a chalky, almost gritty feel and a tendency to wear off after just a few months of use. Also, apparently the white is really good at picking up dirt or makeup. Too bad it can't pick up something nice, like this garment from lttstore.com. Still, the gamery but easy to read legend, secondary media keys on the F-Row, splash proofing drainage holes, and adjustable feet make the RK100 Plus an acceptable baseline at this price point. Or do they? A challenger approaches. We ordered the NPET G20 for $14.99, but what we got is actually the NPET G11, which honestly doesn't seem to really matter. They look about the same. The superior build quality of this board compared to the last contestant is immediately apparent. The plastic looks and feels more quality. The switches are a bit less mushy, especially the arrow keys for some reason. And it's got more reassuring heft to it, despite being a 10 keyless design without the number pad. It too has the RG wannabe color scheme thing going on here with four brightness levels this time, but it actually has three different variants of it. So you can pick your favorite. That is, unless you wanna use the breathing effect. That cycles between all three of them for some reason. The keycaps have a more corporate legend that's easier to read, but might make you lose some Fortnite street cred and makes it so the backlight doesn't shine as brightly through the numeric and the F keys whose symbols are smaller. You've still got to worry about the paint wearing off the keycaps, but at least they're contoured for a nicer typing experience. The legs have rubber feet on them and the LEDs automatically turn off after 10 minutes of inactivity. This thing is a pretty good value, but ooh. The styling and higher quality cardboard of this next box gives me confidence. This is the DB Power K928 for 1990. Hey, hold on a second. This is the same keyboard as the first one. It's just black. And now that I think about it, this is the same keyboard that was in a roundup from three years ago. Wait, what if this one's the same? No, these are all the same. Yes, my friends, four of our eight keyboards obviously came from exactly the same factory. Wow, that's just great. That means all of them are gonna have the same deck flex, poor switch feel and paint over spray on their keycaps as the first one. But that actually doesn't mean that they are exactly the same. The DB Power here has a braided cable, weighs almost 70 grams more, somehow, and has three LED color options. 
though it defaults to red on maximum brightness every time you plug it in. And if you want the breathing effect, it has to cycle through all three. But hey, at least it's got a two year warranty, except the inside of the box and the website both say one year and wait, exclusive offers. Invites to sales event? Okay, that's not a warranty. This is marketing. Oh, you. As for the Mafidi, wow, this one, this one feels even flimsier somehow. This one hits the features to price sweet spot though. That is, unless you think the DB Power's braided cable is worth an extra $3. For $24, you can also get the blue finger combo. I take it back, it was the same flimsiness. This one includes the keyboard, a blue finger mouse, and even a cloth type mouse pad. Now, I'm not sure that I would recommend it. The board is lighter than its cousins. Um, it has the European style enter key, which can be very annoying if you're not used to it. And instead of giving it a dedicated lighting key like the other ones, they mapped it to scroll lock, except it's not like function and scroll lock, it's just scroll lock. I mean, yeah, people barely ever use the scroll lock, but mapping two functions to one key is generally a pretty bad time. And the funny thing is they went ahead and they did that on the mouse again. So it's the same button that changes the DPI and the color of the LED, which is fine if you look at your mouse to remember what DPI setting you're on and you wanna be able to tell quickly, but it just means less configurability if you were trying to like make your whole desk setup match or something. Now, I would excuse that if this were a good mouse, but it's not. Thankfully, at least the mouse pad is exquisite exquisitely ripping off Bloody Gaming's uh, bloody hand thing. <laughs> if you're looking for a combo, I'd say you're better off going for the re RK900 Plus combo. It's the same price and it actually does not include a mouse pad, but it's just better in every other possible way. Oh wow, this, I have made a mess. It's the heaviest board of the bunch with the least deck flex. It's got dedicated media buttons up top, and curiously on the function row as well, LOL, along with drainage holes, legs, a braided cable, and an integrated wrist rest. The lights can be breathing or static through six brightness levels, but while the manual and apparently other customers indicate that you can cycle through multiple colors, ours doesn't seem to have any way to do that. As for the mouse, it too has a braided cable, although it doesn't match the keyboards for some reason. It's got nice tactile clicks, it's got eight buttons and a soft touch rubber finish. It's probably best suited for larger hands. And I think ours might have a light out because it's not very consistently lit, but it is a nice inclusion considering you're only paying a couple extra bucks for it. Next up, we have the Perix Periboard 317 Value Creator. This one was designed in Germany. Ooh. <laughs> and made in China. I'm gonna call this one the Boomer Board. It's got a huge readable legend, a simple white backlight that goes on and off and, is this on? Wow, that's really dim. And it's got all the keys you're used to with none that you're not. It's only 500 grams, it's bendy, it's mushy, and the too short cord terminates in a USB plug that's easy to remove but fights you on the way in somehow. Uh, basically, I don't recommend this one. Bringing us finally to the Rush RK303. Now ours has Turkish writing on the box, so I guess it shouldn't be a surprise that it features a European ISO layout and some extra symbols on the keys. It apparently has a compact design ideal for shooter games, despite looking like a regular old keyboard to me. It's got no legs and apparently it breaks if you rage, but hey, it does have a smashing looking gray cable and an integrated wrist rest. So I guess compared to the rest of them, it's, it's fine, I guess. My official recommendation out of these boards then is the NPET G11, where'd it go? Here it is. If you don't mind a 10 keyless, which leaves you more room for your mouse and gives you a more ergonomic stance for gaming, or if you do need a numpad, I would actually go with, where'd it go? Here it is. The Re RK900 Plus, which is decent enough and also comes with what I would consider to be basically a free grade mouse. Uh, that is to say, sometimes it comes with that, sometimes it doesn't. You know what comes with our videos though? Every time, 
Segways to sponsors like Micro Center. The Main Gear Element gaming laptop is available at 25 Micro Center locations, as well as on Amazon. It features an Intel Core i7-9750H processor, NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2070 graphics, 32 gigs of RAM, a two terabyte SSD, and if you purchase it at your nearest Micro Center store, you can save an additional $100. Check out this and other Micro Center specials at the links down below. If you guys enjoyed this video, check out our previous Cheap Keyboard Roundup, or if you've got some more cash to spare, how about our mid-range keyboard roundup?